Hey y'all, welcome to the Coyote Trapping School podcast brought to you by Cots Bros Lures, um, the most trusted bait in trapping. I just got my recently uh, <clears throat> gallon of gold label in addition to some red label baits uh, that I got as well. So I am going to be uh, baiting heavy this year. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's one thing that I've been doing the last couple of years, or really this past season. Uh, in this season, and um, I'm liking it, so I'm going to keep that up. Um, so be sure you need your trapping supplies. Man, trapping season is going to be here before we know it. Get your uh, get your stuff ordered from Cots Bros. They'll get it shipped out to you really quick, and uh, you'll get just what you need. So today, I thought we'd talk about some resources for trappers. Um, you know, this is generally... <clears throat> I guess somewhat geared towards beginning trappers, but not really. This is applicable for everybody. And uh, so I'm going to go back and forth between my my screen here and um, talking to you. Let me see if I can minimize this. That might help not look weird. Um, but this is going to be kind of a, a, a mixture of a variety of things. You know, some websites, uh, some YouTube channels, and uh, some podcasts, of course. Uh, so for starters, probably the most iconic, if you've been in the trapping world any length of time, um, trapping resource is trapperman.com. That's uh, Paul Dobbins' website, and uh, it's a it's a huge mainly it's it's a forum, and uh, there's thousands of trappers on there. Um, and there's pretty much if you have a question about trapping, if you go there and you search in the search bar, whatever your question is, it's been covered probably multiple times. Um, and so that's one I don't I don't deal in forums a whole lot anymore. I don't I don't spend a lot of time on forums. There's a lot of people that do. The biggest thing with forums is take everything with a grain of salt because there's some you know that there's some keyboard warriors that will preach the gospel when they don't really know uh, the gospel or know what they're talking about uh, as much as <clears throat> as much as they say they do. So just use a little bit of caution there. But that is probably one of the hands down the best resources. Um, weird. Um, <clears throat> probably one of the best resources that you can find just so far as if you've got a specific question um, around trapping, go and look it up because odds are it's been answered before. But um if not, um, you know, ask the question because there's a, a pile of trappers on there that are more than what willing to uh, weigh in, and, and you know they're there to help you out. So um, I'll, le I'll I'll put links to all these uh, in the not in the comments, but in the um, description below, and then also I'll put up a, a page on my website that's got links to to all these resources as well. So some other resources, um, Sullivan's line, Hal Sullivan's um, website with a forum. So Trapper Man has also have some um, it's kind of some introductory uh, items so far as getting started trapping and, and um, as well. Sullivan's line.com. That's Hal Sullivan's website. Hal Sullivan's an iconic name in trapping. Uh, he's been writing about trapping for a long time. Um, and then also minktrapping.com. Um, you may or may not have heard of Minktoberfest, but um, that's actually a site that I've been kind of perusing a little bit just because mink at this point are my nemesis. Granted, there's not very many around, and I don't know that um, I've got any in the areas that I'm trapping, but I really want to catch a mink. So uh, that's that's the fur bear that I haven't caught, at least that lives in my area. So. Um, minktrapping.com is a, is a good resource too. A couple, several of sites, trapping organizations, uh, obviously most states have, um, you know, at least one, if not multiple, uh, trappers associations. That's definitely places that, uh, you know, we need to support and some are better than others about posting, um, you know, kind of, I guess, instructional or, or how-to content. Um, some are getting getting pretty good about that, especially as easy it is to film things. Um, 
I think Mississippi last year or the last couple of years has filmed the demos at their convention and then published them um, on their website. So that's pretty, pretty innovative, pretty good idea. Hopefully more will continue to do that. Um, so outside of your state organizations, uh, you've got the National Trappers Association, nationaltrappers.com, um, furtakersofamerica.com, and then uh, furbears.org, which is Fur Bears Unlimited. And uh, so, so all those are kind of, furbears.org is not, um, it's a little bit different. Let's see if I still got them pulled up. So Fur Bears Unlimited, um, so their, their website specifically says they are not a trapper's association. Um, they are more a resource um, for trapping organizations. Um, they, they support and, and uh, promote education and um, scientific study and analysis of uh, trapping and management of fur bears. So, but then you you've got um, then you've got the National Trappers Association, Fur Takers of America. Both of those have links to the best management practices, which is pretty handy um, for most every species fur bear species in in North America. Uh, their best management practices. S sometimes those documents can get pretty um, high level, maybe a good way to put it. They're very scientific and kind of dull and boring to read. Um, <clears throat> but it's, it's valuable just from the standpoint of those documents and that information was put together based on research from testing of you know, these different types of traps and different methods of trapping for uh, for the fur bears. So um, those are those are great resources, especially if you're new to trapping. You know, it kind of outlines um, different type traps, different size traps for the species, and uh, there's certain criteria that uh, traps had to meet so far as damage and and uh, things like that to be able to be included as in the best management practices category of traps. So um, definitely, definitely a good resource. And then the National Trapper Association and Fur Takers of America, um, both of which I'm a member of, I would encourage everybody to um, support because every year over the last several years, and it's continuing Antis are looking for ways to whittle away at our rights and um, and our privileges, and you know trapping is an easy target just because people don't understand it. People think, um, you know, people see the the bad guys on these uh, TV shows. Man, I I thought about it, you know, with with young kids. Um, most of the kids' movies, you know, they they all have a a hero and a villain and a lot of times the villains either somebody that's um you know cuts down trees or kills animals or you know it <clears throat> things that in reality are beneficial and um you know when done in the right way with the right um permits and permissions it's, it's perfectly legal and uh accepted and ethical um but you just think about how the seed that that plants in, you know, kids that are seeing that. And, and, and it's no reason why, um, you know, people have a, a misconception about trapping and hunting. Um, when you start thinking about the, all the, the movies and TV shows that, that portray hunters and trappers as the bad guys, the villains, you know? So, um, all that to say, the National Trapper Association, Fur Takers of America, are doing what they can to support and promote trapping, and uh, we need to support them. Uh, and also, I would throw in there, uh, Sportsman's Alliance is another one that, that uh, is 
always on the, the cutting edge of not just trapping, but uh, <clears throat> hunting and fishing and general uh, outdoorsman uh, rights and attacks against those rights. So um, those are definitely also resources that I would uh, encourage to uh, check out and support. Another website that may kind of keeps up a little bit more with maybe current events in the trapping world. It's a little tougher to, it's not super user friendly. How about that? Uh, but trappersreport.com is a, uh, you know, there's, if there's any kind of news related to trapping uh, across the country, the odds are that it's, it's followed up and, and at least linked to at trappersreport.com. So I've recently started going there just to see um, what, you know, what may be going on in the news uh, regarding trapping in uh, in and around the country. And there was actually two articles. Uh, let's see if I can open these up. Two articles that talked about um, coyotes and, and increasing coyote control. Um, One of them was in California, where obviously they just banned trapping. Um, <clears throat> another one is in, this is Lincoln, so I'm assuming this is uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. This is the Lincoln Journal Star. Um, so, I don't know whether this this reporter got this wrong or, or if this is really how it was, but... Um, it's an it's a neighborhood um, that is seeing increased coyote activity, and uh, so here's I'll read a couple of excerpts. In May, officers responded to a series of coyote confrontations near Holmes Lake, um, with video showing the animals acting more brazenly than in the past, approaching and following people and pets. So animal control stepped up their response. Um, and then a coyote picked up a 15-year-old chihuahua and shook it to death in front of the six-year-old child. And then a few days later, a coyote chased a group of children in the same area until an adult intervened. So... Animal control, obviously, I'm impressed that animal control did anything with that because in my area, animal control, if it's not a cat or a dog, um, <clears throat> if it's a cat or a dog, a lot of times they aren't going to respond. But if it's not a cat or a dog, they're not going to do a whole lot. Um, so they reached out to the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission and uh, USDA Wildlife Services. Um, so now, this, is, this was the last month, um, more than two weeks now, local and federal officers have been monitoring three live traps. And this this is where I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the reality. They said they bait the traps with fried chicken and other meat, and check them often. Tree mounted trail cameras also alert officers to nearby animal activity. We don't quote. We don't want any animal in one of those traps for an excessive period of time. <laughs> so far, they've caught no coyotes, but officers did have to release a raccoon and a possum. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, it just, uh, I thought after seeing, seeing those two articles, it's, um, it's interesting how people's perspective change and, you know, they, people can be just diehard animal lovers, um, until a coyote shakes a chihuahua to death right in front of, you know, that's perfectly natural and people probably still get ooey and gooey if it did that to a rabbit, you know, but, uh, all of a sudden, all of a sudden they start stepping on toes and, and, uh, people get, they, their attitudes and opinions change and it's all right, we need to get rid of this thing. Um, it just, again, shows the, the disconnect of reality and, um, today's culture, really, of, of just being so disconnected from reality and disconnected from um, nature and the, the 
the predator prey relationship and and uh you know we are we're part of that too you know we're we're part of the food chain and we um we can and obviously you and me do participate uh and so that's that's what keeps those things in check and that's what keeps those coyotes from um from not coming up and, and chasing your kids is when that coyote sees sees man and is used to man shooting at him then uh he's got that healthy respect for man and when man coyotes not used to seeing somebody shooting at him then uh he doesn't have a lot of respect for man and um he's gonna look for look for any weakness that he can find that's his nature and and uh he's exploiting it just like we're exploiting his so uh, but anyway if you're if you're interested in keeping up to date with different trapping news that may be going on around the around the country uh, trappersreport.com is a good resource for that um and then uh of course if you're interested especially in anything having to do with the, the trapping industry and um fur industry fur news um trappingtoday.com my buddy jeremiah wood over there he, he does a really good job of keeping up uh in <clears throat> more of a user-friendly format than Trapper's Report. Uh, but he's a, he does a really good job of keeping up with kind of the same um, news, in, you know, especially more related to fur trapping in the, in the trapping industry and the fur industry. Um, but his web or his website, trappingtoday.com, and then he's also got the Trapping Today podcast, which, uh, again, he covers a lot of those uh, current events as well as interviews with trappers and uh he's from maine um so he is a yankee but he's he's pretty good and uh you know help you get help you get a little uh a little sense of what those what what people up north deal with um uh, that us down in the south don't have to deal with with under ice trapping and crazy things like that but uh, definitely traveltoday.com a good resource to check out and the Trapper Today podcast as well. <clears throat> and then, of course, before we're fixing to roll into podcasts, but uh, you've also got uh, Wolfer Nation, which is Clint Locklear's. Um, he's got a website uh, with all sorts of different trapping material and and uh, videos, and, and of course, he's got the uh, the original trapping podcast, uh, Trapping Radio. And uh, <clears throat> just just a huge wealth of knowledge. He's, Clint has been in the industry for a long time, and uh, he is he's probably been on the cutting edge of kind of the technology portion, the technology aspect of, of adapting and and moving with technology way better than the rest of the trapping industry. Uh, he's got a very large YouTube channel, um, and then like I said, his his uh, trapping radio, which has been his podcast that's been going on for like eight years or something, I think maybe longer than that. Uh, and he's looped in some others. So, uh, meat trapper, the meat trapper, I think maybe his YouTube channel. Um, but meat trapper radio is, is part of trapping radio. And that's an, another great resource. Um, you know, coming at it from more of the, uh, food and survival side of things. Um, I watched several of those videos on uh, snapping turtle trapping, um, so then transitioning into, um, podcasts, of course you're listening to the best one there is, right? Coyote Travis School podcast. Um, but you know, there are a few close, um, second and third. So Traving Today podcast, the Trap House podcast, which is put out by, um, Hoosier Trapper Outdoors. So Jake and Mr. Charlie putting out that podcast. Um, I think they do that every other week. And uh, Trapping Today is weekly. Um, trapping Radio. Now, I, I've had hit or miss success finding that on um, um, podcast platforms. You can find it on the internet and you, know, you can listen to it from your browser. But so far as finding that in iTunes, which it's a little bit frustrating because there's a huge wealth of information there, but it's not as easy to access if you're used to podcasting and, you know, consuming podcasting type media in that form. Um, 
And then there's also the Trapping Inc. Uh, Scuttlebutt podcast. So that's some folks from Canada um, talking about their trapping and, and kind of the northern lifestyle. And they've actually, I think they have a, a series on Amazon Prime uh, as well, Trapping Inc. Um, so you got, <clears throat> you got those. And then, like I said, uh, Meat Trapper, he's got a large YouTube channel. Um, Wolfer Nation is a, a large YouTube channel, Clint Locklear's um, Hoosier Trapper Outdoors, um, which is Hoosier Trapper Supply. They have a, a great YouTube channel, putting out a lot of good um, content, again, geared toward beginners and, you know, trying to get people started um, in trapping. So I think that kind of winds up the, the trapping resources that I had kind of outlined. Again, Trapper Man being being a, a major resource with just a vast amount of knowledge and, and the way that stuff is um, you know archived and you can search it. It's just super handy. Like I said, if you've got questions about trapping, um, anything I, I would shock me if it wasn't already answered there. So definitely check to see if it's answered there if you've got a question, but don't hesitate to ask too because there are a lot of guys uh, on there that are ready and willing to help folks get started trapping. So that, I was trying to think if I missed anything, that kind of rounds it out. Of course, um, my website, coyotetrappingschool.com, I've got information on there about uh you know, getting started trapping and then links to the podcast, my YouTube channel where I have a lot of information there, uh, as well as my Trappers Academy, which is um, a, what's a good way to, a curated format of videos um, that will walk you step by step from, I don't even own traps to I'm catching coyotes. So um, that's definitely something that, that is available too. Um, like I said, it's kind of, it's not surprising, I guess, but uh, it's, it's a little bit, maybe disheartening a little bit that uh, trapping hasn't come as fast along with technology as, as technology has advanced, but uh, I definitely, I mean, it's coming and uh, maybe it's not all bad that uh, the technology is so intertwined. Um one other resource that I'll mention, since you since you listen to the end, I know this isn't a long episode like some of my others, but since you listen to the end, uh, one resource that I've kept pretty close to the to the vest, um, and it's not so much a learning resource as more of a an outlet uh, to be able to sell things, is taxidermy.net. Um, so one one section of that deals there's it's a it's a large forum. And there's a buy and sell section. And so there are um, there, there are people on there that, you know, are looking to buy skulls. And so that's a, that's a good place. Uh, I, I got turned on to it when I was in college. And that was, you know, when the economy was rocking and rolling. And um, I, I had a lot of good luck selling just whole frozen animals. Um, for really good prices on there, way better than any fur market prices I could have gotten. Um, and that's kind of where I first got turned on to it. Uh, you don't see, from from the little bit that I've been on there lately, you don't see as much of the interest in in buying <clears throat> buying the whole animals. And it's, it's for people to, to mount. So, um, but if you catch a black coat or, uh, you know, some kind of piebald otter or something unusual, that is where you market that kind of stuff because the fur market's not going to pay for unusual animals. They want uniformity. But if you've got a black coat or something like that, that's a great place where you can go and get, get a good price um, for your animal. Of course, you've got to ship it. you got to know about shipping it. Um, but, but that is taxidermy.net is a great resource um, for selling some of the things that 
may not be as easy to sell. You know, people talk about selling skulls and things like that, but it's not that easy to find somebody that wants to buy 30 beaver skulls. Um, but places, places like that, you can come across people um, that that's what they're looking for. Uh, and then another portion of that is uh, there's a whole tanning forum. And uh, you talk about some people that have a very in-depth knowledge of tanning and the tanning process. Um, and so, you know, I know a lot of trappers are interested in tanning. And so that can be another great resource as well, just to kind of get uh, background and introduced and, and uh, I guess, kind of apprised on the different aspects of, of tanning and, you know, the different processes and, and uh, what all might be required. So uh, that's another good resource as well. So um, I know I'm putting this out there for everybody to hear, but keep that one, keep that one kind of under your hat until somebody really earns it if, uh, if, you're, if they're asking. But uh, that's what, to me, that's what all this is about is, is, is sharing and uh, trying to give everybody the, the best opportunities possible to, uh, to get into trapping, get interested in trapping and uh, get motivated to stay trapping. So as we wrap up, I, I do want to put out a, a uh, request for anyone that has any close call stories from trapping. Um, I thought that might be of interest, you know, as I, as I, I the, the idea kind of came to me a couple weeks ago and, uh, you know, I, I probably most of us trappers, uh, I love reading stories, um, about fishing or, or the wilderness or, or trapping or whatever. Um, but the, the captivate, the most captivating portions are a lot of times, um, when something dramatic happens, right? When something serious happens. And so I got thinking about that. Uh, one of the, one of the books that I read, um, I should have, I should have looked it up, but, um, well, one, one great book that if you haven't read, it, I would encourage you to read is called Endurance. And it's the story of, uh, Ernest Shackelford and his uh, trip to the Antarctic. There's also a documentary on it on uh, Amazon Prime, uh, but an incredible story about some guys that went from Europe, England, all the way to Antarctica, wound up getting stuck in ice for a year, and wound up being spending like at least two years down there trying to get out and get back home, and uh, just unreal the the, the will those guys had to live. Um, but... Uh, so I got to thinking, you know, um, especially in the South, a lot of times we're trapping out of our trucks. There's not that much hazardous stuff going on. Um, but I know there are the potential. Um, you know, there's folks running river trap lines on occasion. I ran a river trap line myself. was fortunate enough to not have any incidences like that. But uh, if you if you have had an uh, ish incident like that, issue like that, where uh, you had some serious trouble on the trap line and you would be willing and interested in talking about it, uh, shoot me an email at chris at coyotetrappingschool.com. I'd love to talk with you and see if uh, see if you might be game for doing an interview and and uh, sharing some of those close calls. One, just because I think those make great stories and, uh, you know, something that people would like to listen to. But two, as trappers, you know, knowing things to watch out for so that we're we're safe on our own trap line so that we don't encounter that, that kind of stuff. So um, shoot me a message if you got something like that. And uh, otherwise, we'll catch you on the next episode.